with us in this place, God. And we know it's only going to get stronger, Lord. I know that your spirit is sweet in this place. And it will continue to get sweeter and fuller. I just want to thank you, God. For blessing this ministry with the power of your spirit. I just want to thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name. I just want to give a very, before I go into the word, I just want to give a little update about what's going on with this ministry. Um, I was in prayer yesterday, and there, there are military men in this place, um, and you guys are going to get this. Graham knows the story of how this ministry was birthed. He knew how tough, tough it has been to bring us into this position. And then yesterday in prayer, the Lord made it absolutely clear. The beachhead has been taken. In the spirit realm, we've taken the beachhead. We are secure. It's birthed. And when you take the beachhead, that pioneers the way for the reinforcements to come. We've taken the beachhead. So I want to thank every single person who has prayed, who has stood in support with me, that's helped me financially, emotionally, in many other ways. So I celebrate the reality. We've taken the beachhead. We're on solid ground. We are established. We are established. The other thing that's going on, we have 15 people come to the prophetic chambers. We're getting Muslims coming, engaging Muslims. We're able to encounter them and speak the reality of Christ. One Muslim come and then we have five Muslims. They're gathering. We know that a part of this calling is to do with Muslims. So the Lord is making that way clear to us more and more. We have started to street preach. It is phenomenal the speed that things are beginning to happen on the streets. We've brought four people to the Lord, three people to the Lord. We're starting to get more organized. Whoever pre I preach, it's not just me preaching, Lee's preaching a little bit, and there's another guy preaching a little bit. And it's, the preacher gets the attention. But what is happening is, we're getting people coming to help us. And they're at the front of us, and they're, as we bring in the person, as it were, they are ministering to those people. So we're starting to build a crowd. And those people at the front are speaking to them about Jesus. And the tracks are going forth. And we believe on healing on the street. We are believing for. And I mean this with all my heart. And I am pressing in. And I am pressing in. And I am pressing into the spirit of God. I am believing for Acts 2 to manifest on that core market street. I am telling you. I am believing for Acts 2. I am believing for signs, wonders, miracles, healing, and pouring of the Spirit on Corn Market. We've been called to this place. I have not chosen this city. The Lord revealed it to me supernaturally. You should have applied to Oxford University, David. Oxford. I have no contacts in Oxford. I don't know anybody in Oxford. I only been to Oxford once when I was a child. So when the Lord revealed that to me, I was like, what? Oxford, we've been established here, and the Lord will build his church, and there is a connection going on with other people from other churches, it's not about Christ's revelation, it's about the ministry of what the Lord wants to do in Oxford, and we're one of many other ministries in this city, so I want to make that clear, so I just want to thank you for what certain people have done in relation to get this ministry off the ground. Lee, next week, and I'd like you to pray about this, this is the workings of God. This is the providence of God. Lee is going to be pre-interviewed for CBN Network next week. Christian Broadcasting Network. Look at us. And look what's just coming to us. 
we will have one week where we will give testimonies and I will notify people. We'll have a Sunday where we just give a testimony. Lee's testimony is pretty serious. Awesome. My testimony is pretty serious. Graham's testimony is pretty serious. I'm sure Alan's got a testimony. I'm sure you haven't. We've all got a testimony. So one week we will have a sharing week where we just deliver our testimony to see the reality and the goodness of what God's done in each one of our lives. So I'd like you to pray about this thing. Let's not get carried away with it, but let's just acknowledge what has come across our path. Please lift it up in prayer that what they will do, they will ring Lee for his story, then they'll check it, as in they'll analyse it and see, yes, this is, we want to put this on the TV. We trust in the Lord, but let's just lift it up in prayer because it, it could bring, who knows what it could bring? <laughs> who knows what it can bring? So we trust in God. I want to say this because this is brilliant. If people have time to do this, there is something called Oxford Burn. Oxford Burn is where they meet at the Wesley Memorial Church. It only happens once a month. It starts at 12 o'clock. It finishes at 5 o'clock. And all it is is just praise and worship. Nobody's preaching. Nobody's teaching. It's just praise and worship. Praise and worship. And I want to affirm them, because we've got people listening on Facebook, and we've got people listening on YouTube. God is moving in this thing called Oxford Burn. The presence and the supernatural revelation, if one's heart is right with the Lord, God is releasing supernatural things, visions, insights. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. And I pray, I, I, I pray and I ask you, don't miss this. This is a season appointed by the Commander-in-Chief of Heaven's Army, Amen. of the angelic hosts. He is moving. He is moving. Humble thyself, my brothers, my sisters. Humble thyself. To meet with the living God. For those that humble themselves in due season, I will lift you up. Every single person has been given a plan and a destiny and a future in God the Father. Seek Him, for He shall reveal. For the Spirit of the Lord is moving. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. Come forth with your brokenness. Come forth with your pain. Come forth to receive restoration. Come forth to receive healing. Come forth to receive deliverance. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you, Lord. We just, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to go into the Word. If we have our Bibles, please. We're going to go into the Word of God. If we have our Bibles, can we turn to the book of Zechariah? Zechariah was a, a minor prophet in the Old Testament. And if we can go to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Yeah, we need to. Zechariah chapter 4, we're going to go verses 1 to 10. Verses 1 to 10. This is a prophet of God speaking. Book of Zechariah, a prophet of God. Here we go, verse 1. Then the angel who was speaking with me returned and roused me, as a man who is awakened from his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? 
What do you see? And I said, I see. And behold, a lampstand, a lampstand, all of gold, with its bowl on the top of it. And its seven lamps are on it with seven sprouts, belonging to each of the lamps which are on the top of it. Also two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on the left side. Wow, I'm getting good at this now. <laughs> then, verse 4, Then the angel, then I answered and said to the angel who was speaking with me, who was speaking with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? So the angel who was speaking with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and said to me, Stop. Then he answered and said to me, How many of you are in a position whereby you believe that God will speak directly to you? Who believes that they are in a position where the Almighty through the power of his spirit, will speak directly to you. And he said, no, my Lord. Then he answered and said to me, said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who was Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel was a prince of, of Judah, of Israel. Zerubbabel was taken in, they were taken into captivity. This is the first time that the Jewish people were taken into captivity. Cyrus decides to let the people go back. So Zerubbabel was the leader of rebuilding the, first temp the second temple when they were sent back to their home country. So they'd been taken into captivity. The prophets, the prophets, the prophets said, you are going into captivity. Zerubbabel was the leader who was charged and commissioned by God to start the rebuilding because the temple had been completely destroyed. The temple of Solomon had been destroyed. He led them back into their home country. And he was charged and commissioned by God to rebuild the temple. And this is what started to happen. They've gone back. They started with enthusiasm building the temple. But this is what happened. They started to get discouraged for various reasons. And then they started to focus on building their own homes. Because the place had been demolished. It had been looted and pillaged by the invading armies. So they initially started to rebuild the temple. But as time went on, they forgot to build the temple. And then they got concerned about building their own homes. They started to put their energies and their times and their efforts and their material needs into building their own place. God sent this prophecy saying to Zerubbabel, not by might, this word in the Hebrew when we see that word might, it's talking about the might of man, the resources of man, his wealth, his, his strength, his armies, his intellect, his know-how, the way that he thinks it is. How strong am I? But the Lord is saying, not by might, nor by power, 
but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That Lord of hosts is saying, the Lord of the angelic realm of heaven. So this is the very word of God unto the leader who was charged with, and he was saying, you're not going to do this by your might. You're not going to do this by your power. You will do it with my spirit. But there had to be a refocus. There had to be a refocus whereby God can release his spirit into our lives. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. In the New Testament, does the Bible not say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. <coughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. This is... Is in, in some ways, it's a similar statement to what I've just said from the New Testament. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And they were able to accomplish this. They were able to get the temple rebuilt. It was done. But it took a man to refocus on God, and God released the spirit more and more unto that person. To get done what he was called to do, to get done what he was commissioned to do. And I am saying that Lord God is calling and he is commissioning and he is anointing a reorientation. <coughs> a reorientation comes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things. The enemy will lie to you. The enemy will tell you lies. I cannot seek ye first the kingdom of God. I have to pay my bills. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. It's a lie. It's a lie. I'm not saying we sit back and do nothing. If you're a married man and you've got children, of course you have to work. Of course you've got to put food on the table. But that's not the overall focus. That's not the overall focus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. That's the promise of God. But the enemy will bind you down. He will tell you a lie. I can't do that. I can't seek ye first the kingdom of God because of this and because of this and because of this. It's a lie. And that's what was going on here. That's why the spirit of prophecy had to come to the man of God. To encourage him. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. <sighs> what is the spirit saying unto you? What is the spirit saying unto you? Are we in a, in a place, in a position to hear what the spirit is saying unto you? Or has the enemy bound us up so much that we've even forgot that that's possible? The Spirit speaks. The Spirit speaks. We can all hear the voice of God. We can all hear the voice of God. We can all hear the voice of God. Whose voice do you want to hear? The news? What do you want to hear? One word, one genuine word from the Spirit of God into your life can change everything. Everything. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Because there was physical labour that had to take place by building that temple. Angels didn't come and build it. Men physically had to do something. And they were energised, supernaturally, to get things done. And that's what the Spirit of God will do. He will energise you. He will give you wisdom. He will give you insight. He will give you revelation from another dimension. It is no longer coming from the dimension of man. You are in connection 
with God. People make it so complicated. Oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Hey, there was Mary and there was Martha. What did Jesus say? Not much is required. But to sit at the feet of Jesus. Not much is required. But to sit at the feet of Jesus. What will you say to me? What will you speak to me? There was a prophet. It wasn't in the thunder. It wasn't in the lightning. It was in the still, small voice. And if you are born again, if you have the living of spirit of God in you, he can speak to you. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. What is the next line? What are you, O oh great mountain? What mountains? Everybody's got a mountain of something going on. Everybody has something of a... Well, I just, I just, I can't do that. I've got a mountain in front of me. <laughs> How on earth am I going to do that? That mountain is there. Let's be real. But what does the word of God say? What are you, O oh great mountain? In other words, who are you, mountain? Who are you? Who are you, mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. You will become a plain. In other words, that mountain will be squashed before you. It will become a plain. Flattened. So what lying giant in your mind is telling you that there is this massive mountain? I can't go deeper. I can't seek ye first the kingdom of God because there is a mountain before me. The word of the Lord is saying, you will become a plain. <laughs> you will become a plain. You will fall. God is supernatural. Look at Jericho. What happened? One strategy from God, which sounded crazy. It sounded nonsense. Walk around the city for seven days. Do you know how big the walls of Jericho were? It was some fortified city. Massive. One strategy. One clear hearing of the voice of God. Strategy from the commander of heaven's army. Walk around the city. Obey me. Not... We have a negative understanding with the word obey. As a child, I had problems with somebody saying obey. But with this, and my kids have problems with... <laughs> but with this God, it's not like a servitude sort of obey me. He's saying that word obey because he knows what the outcome is if you will humble. Because then, this is why you understand his glory in your life. And those that understand him those that know him will do exploits for him. So when the word, do this son, obey. Because by obeying that, you get to see the fruit and the reality of what this God can do 
with us. Those walls of Jericho came down. That mountain before Zerubbabel became a plain. You will become a plain. And he will bring, and this is brilliant. Now we can go on and on and on. And he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. The top stone was the top of the temple. The top stone is the last thing to get put in place. And once you know that you have followed through on what God has told you specifically, individually and directly... You will understand grace, grace, grace. You will understand that it was God's grace unto you that has enabled you to complete what you were supposed to do. And that's what's going on here. This is the prophetic word. He will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. The twelve disciples, man. Look at what type of people they were. You had Peter, who was quite a violent character. A high priest comes. What does Peter want to do? Chops off his ear. Jesus said, Do a miracle. That's the reality. Peter, Peter chops off the, the high priest's servant here, so we've got one violent man. We've got the apostle Paul. If he was in a court of law, would be in court for manslaughter. Kill those Christians. You had a tax collector who was ripping off the people. They understood grace. They understood grace. What will God do with us if we humble ourselves? What will God do with us for his glory and for the fullness of our life on this planet. Those that know me, those that know me will do exploits for me. Also the word of verse 8 also the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. That's the foundation of the temple. And his hands would also finish it. That's prophecy. He's laid the foundation. The word of the Lord is coming unto him. You will finish this. I am with you. And if I am for you, no man can be against you. If I say yes, no one can say no. Of this house. And his hands will finish it. Then you will know. Then you will know. Let me tell you what it means by this know. Once you know, you as an individual who is in fellowship, who is in relationship, who is endeavouring to honour the God. Once you, once you know that you're doing that and you see God respond back to you in your life, it is, <laughs> it's ineffable. You can't, you can't, you, you try to explain what that's like, you can't do it justice. Once you know that God is aligning himself with you, that you know that you are in the plan of God. We said it last week about the word being blessed. When you know that God, your life is bit by bit progressing by God. Not by you, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Once you know that God is advancing you by his spirit, it is brilliant. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord runs over and over and over and over. 
For it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit. So once you know that you know that your life is being progressed by the spirit of God, it is priceless. Hmm. Hear me. The enemy is a liar. He is the father of lies. He is a liar, a deceiver. Jesus confronted the enemy by what? His might? His anointing? His power? No. It is written. The word of God. He comes again. It is written. Third time. It is written. The enemy wants to squash the power of the word of God in our lives. If he stops you from picking up that Bible and studying yourself, studying the word of God, you are on the back foot. For it's the sword of the spirit that cuts through the darkness. It's the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, that breaks shackles and chains and bondages. The Word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel. The Word of God came to him. He was encouraged. He was fortified. He was lifted up. He knew that God was with him. And the prophecy said, you will finish it. What will you finish? What will you even begin? What will you begin? What will you begin? So that the word of the Lord will come unto you. You will finish it. New Testament. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. It is me who has begun the work. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit coming into you. Therefore, I have, I have begun. You have received the new birth. You are mine. But do you realize that you are his? Jesus knows it. But do you know it? You know that you are his. Where will you go, my brother? Where will you go for counsel? Where will you go for comfort? Where will you go for refreshment? Where will you go for knowledge? Where will you go for understanding? Where will you go? Where will you go? I know the number of hairs that are upon your head. I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. Where will you go? Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? Look at my life, man. I'm insignificant. What have I got? What's going on in my world? I've got problems with my wife. I've got problems with my children. I've got issues. I haven't got a load of money in the bank. I'm struggling just to get through the next day. God, really. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about life. Well, I've had this happen to me. I've had this happen to me. I'm struggling to put food on the table this week. What does the Word of God say? Another translation says it this way, and it's a better translation. Despise not the day of small things. Despise not that you haven't got these things. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Why would God say that? Why is he saying that? 
Why? Question. Any answer and we'll come to an end. Anybody got an answer? Why would God say, despise not the day of small beginnings, of small things? Why? Because all good things come to those who wait. Good point. God provides for you. God provides. What else? Anything else? Because of God, all things are possible. Sorry? Because of God, all things are possible. Good one. Let's look at the context of this chapter, of what I've been reading. Let's look at the context. Let's land it somewhere. <coughs> Zerubbabel. Lord, they're not listening to me. The people are off. They're building their own houses. How on earth am I going to get these people to help them do this? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Whatever you are facing, if you think it's smaller, and I'll tell you what, that's a good place to start. Why is that a good place to start? Because you understand your complete insignificance in relation to what God wants to do with you and through you. For I will not share my glory. So once you understand, once you come to that place of, I can't do this. That's the best place to be. Because you understand it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit. So what will happen in your life? Complete renewing, a complete reorientation of your thinking because you will be calling out and calling out and calling out help me spirit, help me spirit help me spirit, what are you doing, what are you doing by default you are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and therefore all things will be added Boom! see it see it despise not the day a small thing Call upon the name of the Lord. You shall be filled. In It's Paul. It's Paul in the book of Ephesians. That we may be filled with the fullness of God. I am being filled for the fullness of what God is calling me into. You shall be filled with the fullness of God in what he is calling you into. If you believe, doubt not. Doubt not. Doubt not. Call out for the fullness. Call out for the Spirit of God, the living God, to come upon you, to revitalize you, to vivify you, to strengthen you, to anoint you, to release what God has given unto you. For you will not do it through your might or your power. It will not be done. And if it is done on that, when we go before the Lord at the end of life, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, not for our sin because we are covered, but for rewards, it will be burnt up. But if it is built on the Spirit, on God's Spirit, and your yieldingness, and your surrendering, so that he may fill you with the fullness that only he can give you. When we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, it will come out as gold. Because you have aligned yourself. You have aligned your life. You have aligned your destiny to God. Enter in. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy that I have prepared for you. Father God, we praise you. Lord, 
Let the giants of our minds fall. Let the mountains in our minds become a plain. Let us understand that all things are possible to those that believe. If God is calling you into it, if God is calling you into it, all things are possible. Receive.